Welcome to Sonoma Strong's online healing fair. I am Diana Borges, co-founder of Sonoma Strong Healing Fair, along with Sherry Petrioli. Um, I want to let you know that this is being recorded and replays will be uh, put on our Sonoma Strong Healing Fair's YouTube channel. So if you would like to ask a question to our presenter, Terry Moon, or Sherry Petrioli or myself, um, you can put it into the chat while we're recording. And the chat button is down at the bottom of your screen if you're using the computer. And then if you go over to the right, you can type in a question or a comment. Um, after the recording is done, we will open it up for discussions. So stay later and we'll have a little chat. Um, so this is the first online Cinema Strong Healing Fair, but we've held three previous healing fairs in person. And the first one was in 2017 when the wildfires came through Sonoma County and a couple of the surrounding counties in our area. I'm gonna show you right now our contact information. Uh, you can see on the screen, this is our mission. And our website is sonomastrongfair.com. You can contact Sherry or myself at info at sonomastronghealingfair.com. We have a Facebook page, Sonoma Strong Healing Fair. And like I said, the, this is being recorded and all of our replays for the online event are accessible through our website. There's a link to our YouTube channel. And through the entire month of April, we have a presenter at 8.30 in the morning or seven o'clock at night and that specific daylight time. And Tonight, we are honored to have Terry Moon as our speaker, and she will be speaking about essential oils. So welcome, Terry. Thank you, Diana. Thanks for that introduction. And yeah, I'm happy to be here. There's essential oils, but a lot more I want to share with you tonight as well. So um, I'm calling this talk um, Support Health and Well-Being, Emotional Balance, beauty and a clean and green home with gifts from nature. So it's all about doing things without any toxins, all natural and very effective ways of supporting our body's immune system as well as emotional balance and finding products that are not, we're not gonna use um, cosmetics and or cleaning products which tend to really damage our immune system and can keep our immune system down and, al and allow us to be susceptible to things that might be going around. And that's a particularly important thing right now in the middle of this COVID-19 situation that we're in. So um, I wanna just uh, say welcome tonight. And I'll go through, I have a little plan, but I was also thinking of checking in with people and seeing if there's anything in particular that you have, because I also teach um, the language heart-based communication. And so it's all about meeting needs. And I'm wondering if anybody has any particular needs that you would like um, support around tonight along the topic that I'm talking about now um, that I've suggested for the evening. If you could type it into the chat, I'll give you a minute there to let me know about those. Um, and while you're doing that, I'll just share a little bit about me and how I came to discover this company and these products. Um, I was a massage therapist. I have been for 32, 34 years now. And um, I had heard a lot about essential oils, but I had never noticed any difference and I was curious as to why I would see so many books about essential oils um, and I would read oh this oil is good for that and that oil is good for that but I had never noticed any change <laughs> along any of those lines when I had used the products and then um, one day I was gluing together a dinner plate that um, was broken and I put the super glue on with the biggest piece first and then the other pieces wouldn't fit together. And so I ended up, long story short, um, thinking, oh, I'll just take the big piece apart and put the little pieces on. And as in the process of doing that, I ended up
was not uh, ideal. <laughs> and the blood was going everywhere. And I was just sweating profusely, just, I mean, just in shock, really. And um, boy, long story short, I learned so much in that experience. That evening, I went to a class that I had been participating in on a weekly basis. And uh, that was after we went to the emergency room and the doctor put 15 stitches and a big bandage on it and told me to um, keep it above my heart. So I was kind of walking around with my hand over my head and and I went to that class that night and um, another student in the class had these brand new oils. Neither one of us really knew anything about them, but he had an uh, essential seven kit and a raindrop kit and he's a reflexologist. So he put some oils in my ears and we put joy oil on my heart, which was right underneath my nose. And boy, it just changed my whole attitude. And within 10 minutes after putting the oils on the bottom of my feet and these other places, that dead piece of skin that was so white that had been dis detached from my body for five hours was coming back to life. It was shocking. It was really, the color was coming back into it because the oxygen from the oils was getting in there. And of course, at the time, we didn't really know what was happening or understand it, but I knew it was something spectacular. And um, basically, long story short, on the third day, I went to the plastic surgeon who was going to do skin grafts and take flush off my thigh and put it on my thumb and he looked at it and shook his head and said what did you do it couldn't look better and um, so I got to skip the skin grafts and basically on the 10th day of the after the accident I was doing six hours of massage therapy and you know this was like on the third day it was unheard of for people to have so much healing that he actually took the stitches out so um, yeah it was pretty pretty spectacular experience and and that was because I had gotten my very first bottle of essential oil which was geranium and it it regenerated the nerves in my thumb to the point where I could feel it was like a electrical sparks running through my thumb every time I applied it in between clients and then I'd wash my hands and I'd apply some more and the same thing little electrical sparks so it was regenerating the nerves in my body and and my thumb I could zip up pants and brush my teeth and stuff that I hadn't been able to do for days so I was very impressed and I started learning everything I could about essential oils I ended up becoming a certified clinical aromatherapist. And that was uh, 24 years ago now. And over these 24 years, I've had miracle kind of things like that happen in my life from using these products over and over and over and over again. So, um, and I use them for physical support, emotional support, uh, spiritual well-being to support my immune system. I've had um, autoimmune problems for many years, Hashimoto's disease and leaky gut syndrome and many other problems with my immune system and my sensitivity. Just being in a car behind a diesel truck, I, I, I would not be able to breathe. Um, just the, the toxicity. And then I remember going to church and sitting next to someone that had perfume on and I'd literally have to get up and move or if they had just finished smoking a cigarette on, on a bus, then I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't sit next to that person because I was just so sensitive to scents and smells and toxic um, things. And so for 24 years, I've, I've just shared these with people whenever I could just... Uh, makes such a difference in my life every single day. And um, yeah, so um, usually I talk about heart-based communication, which I've been teaching for 15 years, and I don't talk so much about oils, but when Sherry and, and Diana asked me to be part of this healing fair, this is what came up, mainly because the whole COVID-19 situation that we're in right now, I think that a lot of people really could use support with our immune systems to protect ourselves. So, so thank you, Sherry, and thank you, Diana, for inviting me to be part of this uh, healing fair and for allowing me the opportunity to share my 24 years of experience with these products with other people, because I think it could really help right now. Um, yeah, so 
let me get into the very first part. And I'm wondering if there's a way I can share my screen with folks and do a little bit of a slideshow presentation. Um, Sherry or Diana, do you know? Um, let's see. You can, you can share. Okay, just go ahead and share my screen. Yes. Okay, let's see. So let me get my, I know what I need to do, okay. I have to get out of the full screen first. Okay, so I'm gonna start with, not that, nope, not that. <laughs> Where is the one I wanted? Let's see. Okay, here we go. Thank you for your patience. Okay, so this is just a little bit about essential oils in case you don't know anything about them. Um, they're, they're just amazing substances and very unique for considering everything else we have on our planet. So, so um, if you've ever taken a hike through the woods and you have the smells wafting around you, um, those are the plants. And they actually, those scents that the plants put off are their, the immune system of the plant. And they protect the plant from any um, insects or other things that might uh, hurt the plant. So it's, it's literally, it's the immune system of the plant. Excuse me, and it is, if you were to tear your house plant, tear a leaf on that, you would notice some ooze come out of it or fluid or liquid of some type. That actually is essential oil. And the reason it's called essential is because without it, the plant would die. And so this is, this is talking about, it's a volatile um, compound and liquid and it comes from flowers and trees and bushes it's it's um it's the blood of the plant just the way that the blood in our human body carries nutrients to the cells of our body the the oils do the same thing for the plants so it carries nutrition it it, it um supports the immune system of the plant and many other things, um, many other functions. And so um, there's a lot of different ways to gather those oils, but usually what we'll do is distill, distillation. Sometimes it's cold press, like with a lemon or, or um, the citrus oil, you would press the rind and get the oil out of the rind. But with the um, essential oils, usually you're putting plant material in a distiller and I'll, you'll probably see some of that here as we go through. Um, so simple lavender oil has over 600 different chemical constituents. Many of them have not even ever been identified by chemists in laboratories. It's, they're complex things. Just the simple lavender oil is that complicated. And what makes essential oils special? They're potent. And depending upon what oil you're talking about, they're anywhere from 100 to 10,000 times more concentrated than herbs are. And if you think about it, it makes sense because an herb is a plant that's dried out. It's liquid or essential oil is not in there anymore. But the oil is the life force of the plant. And so it has more power than the herbs. Um, and more concentrated. And they're volatile in the sense that they they literally can evaporate if you don't keep the lid on a, on a bottle tightly that it can disappear over time and they're also very versatile because one particular oil like lavender they say lavender is the most versatile oil of any essential oil that exists and the reason is because you can use it for so many different things um, whether you burn yourself in the kitchen or whether you're um, having a hard time going to sleep at night or you're stressed you can breathe it in and it can change a lot of things um, and this is an interesting little tidbit or um, piece of information which is one 15 milliliter bottle of lavender essential oil takes 27 square feet of lavender plants to make so you can imagine 27 feet 
wide and 27 feet long, that square area is how much um, of lavender plants it takes to make that 15 milliliter bottle of essential oil. And historically, oils have been used more than 10,000 years, like back in the ancient Egyptian times. The Chinese used them, the Romans used them in the Middle Ages. They've been used uh, for, for so many decades, so many ages, eons. Um, and where do they come from? There's different, different oils come from different parts of the plant. So um, some oils come from the flower, like rose oil or patchouli or ylang-ylang. Some come from the, um, the flowering tops, like geranium or lavender. And then some come from the fruit or the rind, like lemon, other citrus oils. Some are from grasses, some are from gum resin, some from leaves and stems, some from the root, some come from seeds and some come from the bark or the twigs or the needles. Those are mostly like conifers or pine, pine um, trees. So how do you get essential oils out of the plant? There's, there's like four basic ways. Um, the only absolute, which is the last one here, um, that Young Living specifically carries is the um, jasmine. And I think of jasmine as just one of the most feminine. But when I, I toured France with the founders of this company, Gary and Mary Young, back in around 2000, maybe 1999, and we went to the, um, the jasmine, and I got to see the jasmine laid out on a screen. It's like a paste gets put with the flower, and the flower is so delicate. I don't know if you've ever picked a jasmine flower before, but pretty much from the time you can pick it outside and bring it in, the, the leaves are starting to wilt. And so it's a very delicate um, flower and it, and it needs to be with these solvents um, to extract the essential oil from the plant. And a resin tapping, that's another way of, and this resin tapping, frankincense is an example of this. So that it's a tree, a frankincense tree, and that you tap into the bark and the resin oozes from the bark. It's, it's almost like the way that the tree heals the injury to itself, that it secretes this resin. And the resin is something that you could chew on or you can burn or you can um, create an essential oil from. So this um, cold pressing, I mentioned that earlier, it's, that's the way that it, um, oils are extracted from citrus oils. And we do it these, as, as cool of a temperature as possible to try to maintain all the different chemical constituents that are in there. Um, and I'm just seeing that, you know what, this screen is not shared here. So let me see if I can, <laughs> I'm realizing you're not seeing my screen. Uh, let me change this here. Okay, how can I move this? <laughs> okay, here we go, here we go. Okay, now, now you can probably see it. Oh, okay, technology. All right, so steam distillation is the way that most oils are uh, extracted from the plant material. And the way that that's done is to, um, great care is taken with keeping the temperature as, as low as possible and keeping the, the plant material in the distillation and in the cooker, so to speak, um, as long as possible so that all the different chemical constituents are out, uh, come out at the same time. Because as I mentioned with the 600 different kind of chemical constituents in lavender, they have those, the, the more diversity there is, the more synergy happens in the plant material. And so that has a lot to do with quality of the product that you're gonna have is how many chemical constituents are in it and how complex is it. And here's a, here's a little chart of the steam distillation process where it starts with this flame and it has the, the water. Um, and the Young Living Farms, they use um, water that comes down from the mountains, the snow melting. And so, and then um, they put the plant material in the top, tens of thousands of pounds of plant material. 
And then as the steam rises through the plant material, it goes through this funnel and then it gets sent down into a condenser that cools the water and it goes further into this holding tank where the essential oil is a different viscosity or weight molecularly than the water. So in this case, you see the oil is rising and then it's extracted off the top and then the water comes out the bottom. Sometimes, depending upon the oil, the oil is heavier than water and so it would be the opposite. Um, so that's how steam distillation works. And here's a picture of the Young Living Farms where the um, essential oil here is, is getting extracted from these large cylindrical pressure cookers and condensed down into this form. This is a, an example here of cold pressing where you can see the different, they're just like juice presses and they have the um, citrus rind that they're punching holes in that they're extracting the fluid and you can see the fluid here of the essential oil from the citrus oils coming out of the cold pressing process. And here's an example you can see of the resin tapping so that the external part of the plant is cut to retrieve it and the essential oil can get steam distilled and the resins can be chewed like gum, as I mentioned. And here's the absolute um, jasmine flowers with an example of those um, and it talks a little bit, <clears throat> excuse me, about how um, jasmine is, is a, created through this absolute process and requires a solvent. So how can I use these plant materials, these amazing transformational life tools? Um, then there's lots of different ways. There's the three main ways are aromatically, topically, and internally. Now the reason there's three different ways is because historically the oils um, in three different countries were used different ways. So in um, Germany, essential oils tended to be used more for uh, psychotherapeutic reasons or emotional balance. And so in that case, they're they use them aromatically. So if you breathe an oil in, what happens is it goes straight up your olfactory nerve. We'll get a, to another picture of that in a little while. But when, when it goes to your olfactory nerve, it goes straight to your limbic brain, which is our emotional brain. And that's and it is closer to memory than any other sense. So a smell can often trigger a memory, can often trigger an emotional sense in our bodies. Uh, the second way that people can use oils, uh, in addition to breathing them in and changing your emotions, is by um, dropping them in your water and taking them internally. Or I like to use sometimes these um, vegetable capsules. I drop, uh, you know, 10, 15 drops of, a, of an essential oil inside a capsule and put the top on it and take that internally. Now, one in four doctors in France use the essential oils instead of prescription drugs, and they take them internally like that. And um, Young Living has a whole product line of vitality oils is what they're called with the white label, which are specifically those oils that you can use to take internally. And then the other lines of products that are for external use are colored labels instead of the white label. So the third, that, so that's, that's how they do it in France is mostly they use, they take oils internally. And France is one of the few countries in the world that or maybe the only country still, I don't know, I know 24 years ago it was the only country that regulated the quality of essential oils. And I think that they take them internally because they have more, they have the quality regulated, they feel safer to do that. So the third way of using oils is through topical application. That means like rubbing them on your body. And this comes more from the British or um, a tradition in England where oils were only used in a massage application or on the outside of the body. They were never taken internally or used um, psychotherapeutically like, like in France and Germany, in England. And so they use them topically. So those are the three main ways. Definitely the safest way to use an oil 
is to rub it on the bottom of your feet. And then I like to cup my hands over my nose and take six or eight deep breaths. So I'm getting it internally through my respiratory system as well as through the, the thick skin on my palms and on the bottom of my feet. And those there's several reasons for that, which we'll get into as we go through this. But when you breathe it in aromatically, you can put it, put it in your bath or you can put it in the bathroom sink and put a towel over your head or you can put it in a diffuser that disperses the molecules throughout your house or throughout your room. You could put it in an, a, a bottle with witch hazel and make a spray for your linens or your laundry. You could put it on wool dryer balls and throw it in your dryer and have your clothes smelling like the essential oil. There's a lot of different ways to use them aromatically. And here's, a, here's the illustration of the power of aromas where um, smell goes up to the limbic brain, right in the center of our head, and it can evoke emotions before we're even consciously aware of it. So simply by breathing an essential oil, it can shift all kinds of things about the way we're thinking, about our physical well-being, about our emotional well-being. Then, okay, so I must have gone backwards or something here. Okay, internally, this is a little um, picture of different ways that you can use them. You can make them ice cream with them or put them on your, um, I love putting a drop of lemon or grapefruit or uh, lime in my water. Um, I like, you can add them to the veggie cap or you can put them in baked goods as well or like a drop of uh, oregano in pasta, spaghetti sauce is delicious, but you got to be careful not to put too much. <laughs> One drop is so concentrated um, that you could ruin your whole batch of spaghetti sauce if you're not careful. And so here's an example of the Vitality Oil with the white label going into the water bottle there. Um, for me, in a one liter size bottle of water, one drop of peppermint oil is plenty, plenty, plenty. So um, yeah, so there's some just some examples here in this slide of different oils that you might use and why, why you might use them. Uh, the Thieves Vitality to support your immune system, the Diagize for a healthy digestive system and supporting that function, and then grapefruit as a support for weight management and vitality sclerescence for any mood changes or cramps or um, any support for your menstrual cycle. And then the different systems that um, vitality oils can support here, there's more lemon vitality, um, nutmeg, peppermint, German chamomile, and you can find support for circulation, cognitive function, digestion, or um, nervous tension. So as you can see, these each oil has a wide variety of uses. And with when you look at several different oils at the same time, there's all kinds of possibilities. And so how can I use essential oils in my everyday life is the next question. And um, Right here, it's, it's, we're talking about essential oils, are, they act very quickly. Um, I've heard that research has shown that if you put an essential oil um, on your body, or that it's in every cell of your body within 21 minutes. So that, that's, the, and that's because of the way that they are, go through the cell wall, the membrane of the cell. They're very effective as well as I had the experience with my thumb that I shared with you. They're simple to use. Like I said, it can be as simple as just breathing. Uh, they're convenient. You can carry them in your purse. You can have them on your nightstand. Um, they're affordable um, they're, and they're, they're beneficial in so many different ways. Um, here's a slide about balance, you know, so um, yeah, so you can use something like lavender for balance or lang lang or stress away. And um, also if you're wanting to use something for um, in a religious ceremony or a ritual, you might use something that would elevate your mind or excuse me, um, plus something like sacred frankincense or frankincense. I think of frankincense as being more um, for the third eye or the crown chakra. So it's more of a, um, a head closer to the heavens, spiritual in that regard. 
Um, and then I love the stress away and the lavender. Um, I, I, I stress away. I had a bottle of it when I moved. I, a friend and I took a 24 foot truck and we drove um, for 32 hours with all my furniture and everything and to move. <laughs> and I just used that stress away during that trip and it was such a relief <laughs> and so enjoyable to balance my, the stress that I was experiencing during that move. Um, here's another one on balance. So there are things like um, to create a positive atmosphere in an environment. You can use something like citrus fresh, which is a blend of different citrus oils or joy or orange um, to bring tranquility and peace to your bedtime routine. You can try lavender or peace and calming or cedar wood. Or if you feel stuck, um, you can you, um, discover the powerful mental influence of essential oil blends that are formulated to help you discover your potential and support your mental energy, such as valor or brain power or clarity. Um, and then for beauty, you can use different essential oils to soothe the appearance of spots and fine lines or visible signs of aging. And you can use them to restore the appearance of a radiant looking complexion, either sacred sandalwood or frankincense or lavender. There are many different oils that you could use for this. And then for wellness, um, we have some amazing blends, um, both the Vitality line and also other oils that are not the Vitality line um, that you would use in other ways besides consuming them internally. Those include like Daijis and Peppermint and Thieves and Copaiba. Copaiba is a, an essential oil that comes from the Amazon rainforest. Um, we have a farm in Ecuador that they um, distill it from. And this, is, this slide is a key slide for the presentation tonight, especially in the times of COVID-19 here in our um, using things around the home. So you can aromatically diffuse oils to improve the air quality. You can use oils to deodorize your room. You can use them for um, replacing dryer sheets in your laundry or cleaning wood floors or degreasing other surfaces or put them in the sink when you're washing dishes, or there's so many other different ways. Basically, it's just <clears throat> limited by your imagination. And also pictured here is, in addition to the thieves, is the hand, <coughs> I'm sorry, hand purifier. Um, and uh, I wanna um, show you another one about the thieves. Um, thieves, Thieves is an amazing product. Um, it's become one of the brands that Young Living has. And we have a whole line of products, which I'll show you more about a little bit later. Um, and the, um, the Thieves came, um, Gary Young was the founder of this company and he discovered this recipe in a library. And it, it was about the, um, band of marauders that would go around and loot the dead bodies during the Black Plague in Europe. And they would take the gold watches or the gold teeth from these dead bodies and whole towns were wiped out from the plague. But these folks, the thieves, never caught any of the Black Plague, even though they were touching the bodies that had died from it. So this was their secret recipe, the thieves blend, and that is that they were um, perfumers and spice traders, and they used cinnamon and clove and rosemary and lemon, and they rubbed their bodies down with these substances before they went to loot the dead bodies, and that supported their immune system and protected them from getting sick. So that's why it's called thieves after that after them because that was their secret weapon and this is some an example right here in this image of some of the different thieves product line we have a whole product line of products there's the dish soap and the laundry soap and there's a household cleaner and other products um, one of my favorite ones during this whole um, sheltering at home is the um, you can see this it's it's hard lozenges they're cough drops 
made from the thieves. So they taste like the cinnamon and clove and rosemary and lemon, which I'm gonna actually take one right now because my throat's kind of being scratchy here. And I can just suck on these and it soothes my throat um, and gives me the, the, the value of the essential oil to support my immune system at the same time. And then um, pictured here on the right is an image of some of the different products. We have a, a whole pack of essential zymes, which are digestive enzymes. We have, um, this is a, the vitamin line, and then there's some essential minerals that are ionic minerals that are liquid. And then over on the left-hand side here is a picture of the art skincare system, which um, is a, is a, way of caring for our system that has no toxins in it, which will impact our immune system adversely. And so there are some safety tips to think about with essential oils. I mentioned earlier about using, um, well, they're saying how much and how often. So um, there's, there are information and instructions on each essential oil label as to what to use and how much to use, but I, usually just use one drop or two drops. And I think it's important as recommended here is to go slow <clears throat> and start low. Because just as when you get a massage, you might leave with a headache if your body is detoxifying because the massage helps your body start the detoxification process. Essential oils can do the same thing. And so you could end up with a headache or some other detoxification reaction. And the reason for that is that the essential oils are, are soluble with, um, with the lipid in the membranes of each of our cells. So they actually have the ability to go straight through the cell wall and push toxins out of the cell in the process. So it's another way to keep ourselves healthy and stay detoxed out. And, and this is for safety, suggesting a patch test on your skin. People who are more fair complected tend to have more sensitivity than people who have a darker skin complexion. And different areas of our body are also different. I learned this lesson early on <laughs> in my experience with the oils. I had a um, discoloration on the inside of my right arm, up on my up upper arm. And I thought, well, maybe I'll try putting a drop of clove oil on there and see if it if it's a fungus or something and if it would eat it, you know, I was hoping it would eat it away or something and I put it on and clove oil is one of the really hot, it can be very hot on your skin and I'm fair skinned and whoo, my arm was on fire. And then I learned a really important lesson, which is if you have an experience of heat, do not add water because water and oils don't mix. So it drives the oil into your body even more it makes it that much hotter. So I put on, tried to wipe it off with a cold wash rag, wet wash rag, and ended up it burned more than ever. And of course, almost every time I've ever had a, a, an oil be hot like that, pretty much within 20 minutes, it's gone. But those 20 minutes can be <laughs> intense. <laughs> and so um, you can test it on, a, on your forearm and just see if you have any sensitivity to it. Or you can do what I suggest, which is just keep it on the palms of your hands and the bottom of your feet because the skin there is so thick that it's not going to burn you. You're not going to feel any heat experience at all. And another um, caution is that um, you don't want to put on a, on a citrus oil. Like if you put a lemon in your hair and you go out in the sun, it can actually change the pigmentation of your skin and highlight or lighten up your hair and essential oils can do that also. So you want to either put them on at night when you're going to go to bed, if you're putting them on your body, or just keep it onto your hands and feet. And then how do you dilute an essential oil? Um, this is an important question. Um, and you can use a carrier oil or a vegetable oil, which are completely different than essential oils. And they are a fatty substance that actually, and it, it doesn't, de doesn't decrease the uh, positive results or the effects of the essential oil, but what it does do is it, um, it kind of, it, it gives a heavier molecular weight so that the, uh, it's kind of spread out a little bit of the, uh, onto your 
your body and your skin surface. And so it prevents it from being feeling hot or burning. And the good carrier oils include this, these listed on the screen, V6 mixed vegetable oil. That's a blend that Young Living makes that is composed of six different types of vegetable oils. Sweet almond oil, avocado oil, grapeseed oil, fractionated coconut oil, hemp seed oil, olive oil, or rose hip oil. And then what about butters? Coconut butter, mango butter, avocado butter, shea, shea butter, all of these different fats mix with the essential oil and they slow down the process and dilute them. And here's a, a slide that's showing you the difference between essential oils and fatty oils. So essential oils come from the plants, whereas fatty oils come from seeds and fruits. And um, some of the most important ones here is that um, essential are, they're essential to the processes, the life processes of the plant, whereas fatty oils are not. And essential oils are small molecules, whereas fatty oils are larger. So your experience, if you drop an essential oil onto your hand, is like your body just, it just sucks it in and there's nothing left on there. Whereas if you put any of the vegetable oils that I just listed, then it's gonna sit there on your hands until you wash it off. It's gonna feel greasy. So it's easy to tell the difference between the two. And like I said, the essential oils, they're, they're volatile, they're aromatic, they're going to evaporate, whereas a vegetable oil will not evaporate. And the essential oils circulate through the plant, whereas the fatty oils do not. The essential oils are not, not greasy to your touch, whereas the, the fatty oils are. And essential oils, this is an important point too, is that they don't spoil or turn rancid. Um, King Tut, the ancient Egyptians used essential oils every day. They would have these uh, wax cones on their heads in the hot sun and the wax would have the essential oils in it that would drip down their bodies so that they smelled good instead of sweaty. And um, when King Tut died, he was buried with all of his treasures because the Egyptians believed, you know, the mummification that they would come back and so um, his, his essential oils were buried with him and they were all in sealed alabaster jars. And when they found them 3000 years after they were buried, they were still intact. Whereas vegetable oils will turn rancid unless you're keeping them in the refrigerator. And even then, and so here's a list, here are a few um, hot oils. They're shang peppermint, oregano, thieves, thyme, and clove. And can they be applied to sensitive areas of the skin? And, the, and they're talking about the photosensitivity here, and this is what we were talking about already. You, you don't wanna be going out in the sun, exposing your skin to the sun after you've put on some citrus oils like orange or lemon or grapefruit or lime or tangerine or even bergamot, which is one of the three oils that come from the orange plant um, unless you've had 12 to 48 hours or you're so that's a reason to put um, citrus oils where the sun doesn't shine and let's see so um, and you might want to take some care with if you're pregnant or you're nursing to follow the um, instructions on the label and have some information and be empowered. And they're saying to um, avoid over and excessive use of these particular oils when you're pregnant, including clary sage, sage, Idaho tansy, hyssop, fennel, and wintergreen. Um, whoop, we missed one here. So essential oils for your family. Um, you can use these on your children, your babies. Um, kids love these. And if you have a ritual at night, I've heard parents talk about putting peace and calming on the children's feet to help them sleep at night. It gets to the point where they just have this special feeling every time they breathe that oil in. And um, oils, some oils are gentle, but especially if you dilute them with carrier oils, 
they're going to be even that much more gentle. And you can even put them on babies if you're diluting, diluting them that way. And they come in these amber bottles so that they're protected from the sunlight. Um, but you also don't want to put them in the heat or the light um, just to protect them and protect all of those different chemical constituents that are in there because that's what gives them their efficacy. And so um, it's talking about why choose Young Living oils. And, and the reason why is because we have this seed to seal process where we're very selective about where we get our oils. We have farms all around the world. And we have this amazing science that every oil gets tested. Every oil is um, tested to see when to harvest it from the field, as well as does it have all the chemical constituents in it so that it's going to be effective and give the results that we want. And high standards, very, very high standards at this company. And here's some of the different farms um, and distilleries around the world. As you can see, there are quite a few um, Australia, South Africa, Ecuador, uh, all around America. Uh, France, UK, Croatia, Bulgaria, Japan, so many different places around the world. So um, to, to sum it up, the essential oils support a healthy lifestyle, their skin care and beauty, they support wellness, vitality and vigor, they're refreshing and uplifting when you breathe that fragrance in, and they create peaceful and relaxing aromas. And you can use them around your home and add them to your cleaning products. And um, just some information here if you want to learn more. I have, I have a lot more information I could share with you, but I'm noticing the time is 7.49. So um, do, we, do you want me to continue on with a um, little more information? Um, just, or do you want to stop here for Q&A? Um, yeah. I'm going to stop sharing for the moment. Let's see. I'm checking in the chat. And all right. So somebody said that we only have five minutes left. It looks like that was Sherry. And I'll just put it out there. Does anybody have any questions? If you do, you can put them in the chat or you can unmute yourself and you can say them out loud, whatever would be more convenient for you. Actually, right now, while we're recording, we want them to put them in the chat. We'll have open discussion okay. after the recording. Okay, so thank if, you. If anyone has questions, you can put it in the chat. Otherwise, um, we will go on to Sherry and um, we can have the discussion after the recording. Okay, would you like for me to share more or would you like to go on to Sherry, Diana? If there's no questions, let's go on to Sherry and then we can do uh, the open discussion. Okay. Sherry, you are on. Are you there? <laughs> I am. Oh, good. <laughs> I am, thank you, Terry. You're welcome. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of valuable information. Oh, good. Something's going on here. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Anyway, so again, thank you. Good information. And if you have questions after tonight, um, Terry, if you can put your information in the chat box, how to get a hold of you, that would be great. Um, for those of you who don't know uh, me, my name is Sherry Pedrioli, and I am the founder of Holistic Choices Incorporated and the other co-founder of Sonoma Strong Healing Fair. Sonoma Strong Healing Fair and um, Holistic Choices are part of a nonprofit organization that provides to our communities free healing fairs, uh, compilation book series, um, referral directories, all to educate our communities around alternative and holistic healthcare. So if you'd like more information on 
holistic choices and Sonoma Strong Healing Care, please visit our website at sonomastronghealingcare.com or choicesbookseries.com. Your donations help us continue to do these free healing fairs. They allow us to um, have authors write uh, healing stories in the books. So check it out. There's information out there. And I'm actually going to share my screen real quick. Um, for those of you who may have came in a little bit later, here again is our uh, mission. And it's again to provide our community you know, th these services. Our website, sonomastronghealingcare.com. And if you have questions or for Diana or myself, you can uh, send them to info at sonomastronghealingcare.com. And then, as you can see, we have um, still several um, uh, speakers coming up. Tomorrow night, we will have Amy Connor, and she is going to be doing um, some intuitive life coaching, and uh, that'll, that'll be interesting. So I'm, I'm ready to see what that's all about. Um, and then the following morning on the 23rd, Beryl Ryan will be doing some EFT tapping. So again, this information is all on the website and our Facebook page. So feel free to uh, pop in and, and take a look. Anyway, thank you everybody for being here tonight. We really appreciate it and hope you have a wonderful evening.